acquires the properties, the attributes, the characteristics that have been described just now in this surah, this person will truly very very soon be very content. This world is all about being content. Why do people run after money? They'll be content. Why? What, what's gonna make you so content? It'll be that car, it'll be that house, it'll be that wedding, it'll be those clothes, it'll be something you think that's gonna make you content. Allah says, you develop this, I'll give you that what you're running after. You're really not running after money in reality. Allah is teaching us, what are you really running after? Contentment. You just want to be happy. And you think money is going to make you happy. And Allah is teaching you something more. You do this, you seek Allah's face, and I'll give you that what you're running towards. Wala sawfa yallah. Similarly, Allah says, Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma inna al Know that by remembering Allah, the hearts attain satisfaction. Hearts will be at unrest until they attain the remembrance of Allah. Then they will be finally tranquil, satisfied. The, the itch is gone. The, the, you know, the restlessness is gone, subhanAllah. وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى The lam, two more comments and we're done with the surah inshaAllah ta'ala. The lam is actually in, in the Arabic language, can be used to illustrate an oath that hasn't even been said. Meaning, وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى According to Ibn Kathir rahimahullah even says, وَتَاللَّهِ لَسَوْفَ يَرْضَى بِمَا نُعْطِيهِ مِنَ الْكِرَامَةِ مِنَ الْكِرَامَةِ وَالْجَزَاءِ الْعَظِيمِ and I swear by Allah that He will soon be very, very pleased because of what we give Him from the honor and nobility and the most noble and beautiful of rewards. But the meaning Tallahi, I truly swear by Allah, is understood when you just begin with La. Allah doesn't just say, Wa sawfa ya Allah, He says, Wa la sawfa ya Allah. What's the benefit of swearing? You swear when somebody doesn't believe you. Allah says, Believe it, you will be happy. I'm telling you, you'll be happy. Why do you talk like that when somebody says, I don't know, what I'm running after is making me pretty happy, I think. This person needs to be told, I'm telling you, I swear to you, you will be content. You won't have any other desires. You will not be in any unrest. You will find tranquility in yourself. Wala sawfa ya Allah. And soon he will attain contentment. So in the conclusion of the previous surah we read, wala sawfa ya Allah. Those were the last words we read in the previous surah. That soon... He will be pleased. إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى وَلَا سَوْفَ يَرْضَى With the exception of the one who pursues the face of his Lord or, or his, of his Master, meaning he is in pursuit of Allah's contentment, and that's the only goal before them, this is the one who will finally be truly pleased and satisfied. A ghanim in the worldly sense is someone who's so rich, they don't need any money, they don't need anybody's help, they can do everything on their own. This is ghina. In the previous surah we learned, Allah Azza wa says, وَمَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مَالُهُ إِذَا تَرَدَّ His wealth will not be able to make him ghani. His wealth will not be able to make him free of need. He thinks his wealth is going to make him free of need, but when he falls into the ditch, his wealth will not be of any benefit. This is what we learned in the previous surah. So we're learning here that wealth will not make you free of need. In this surah, the positive side. Okay, so well, wealth is not going to make one free of need. So where is, how are we going to become free of need? Allah Azza wa Jalla says in this surah, وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى He found you in a desperate state, and He made you free of need. So it's not mal that gives ghina, it is Allah that gives ghina. Allah makes someone free of need. Allah takes care of their needs. So the, the pursuit of wealth is being contrasted with the one who pursues Allah. And that's why in the previous surah we found in its conclusion, ibtigha'a wajhi rabbihi The pursuit of the face of His Master, as opposed to the pursuit of what? as opposed to the pursuit of wealth. So, going further, we find in the previous surah, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions similarly again about mal, الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَالَهُ يَتَزَكَّى The one who gives his wealth in order to cleanse himself. Now what are some avenues in which you can give wealth? They are discussed in this surah, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ As for the orphan, as for the one who asks, and we're going to talk about the injunctions of Allah, don't turn them away, don't humiliate them, don't you know, embarrass them, etc. Now Allah says, now the human being will be informed. What did he make a priority out of? And what did he put on the back burner? That's the translation I'll prefer here. بِمَا قَدَّمَ What did he give priority to? What took taqdeem for him? What was priority number one? What took precedence? وَمَا أَخَّرَ And what could wait? What were the things that you put on the back burner? The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't do a good deed. The human being says, it can wait, I can do it later. 
The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't leave sin. He says, I'll leave it later. Or, you know, let me do what I want right now. I'll do that later. I have time. Taqdeem and ta'khir, not the grammar one. The one for life. Human beings will be thoroughly informed. What were your priorities? What did you put ahead? What came first for you? What came later for you? Bima qaddama wa akhar. The other meaning of qaddama wa akhar in tafsir juz amma I mentioned also. Qaddama also means what you've sent forward. You've done deeds, you've done works, and every one of them are waiting for you. Our deeds are waiting for us. Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You've sent collateral over. You've sent deeds over for processing. And you're going to meet those deeds on judgment day. I don't meet my deeds now, I just do them now. I will meet them then. وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا And then you're standing face to face in front of their salahs. If your salat was lousy, you'll be standing in front of a lousy salat, staring right at you. That's what it's going to be. If you were lying, cheating, backbiting, angry, arrogant, condescending, whatever you were, you'll be looking right at you in the face. And then you're going to say, Mali هَذَا kitab. That's, that's the reality of it. بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَّرَ What did he make a priority out of? What did he put on the back burner? This is one of those life transforming ayat. The human being will be thoroughly informed, this was your priority. This is what you spent time on. This is what you did with your free time. This is what you thought can wait. You had all these dreams. I want to memorize the Qur'an. What did you do for it? How many seasons of how many TV shows did you watch instead? That was a priority for you. What do you want it to memorize? Oh, but it can wait though, inshallah, one day, when my heart is purified, then I shall start. You know? بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَرْ بَلِ الْإِنسَانِ No, no. Yes, on that day, the human being will be given thorough news, but it's not like the human being is blind now. Rather, the case is that the human being, عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Against his own self, بَصِيرَ Is fully insightful. There is one person that knows so much about you, and nobody else knows about you. And besides Allah, and that's you. You have an insight into who you are, what your flaws are, what your limitations are, what your capabilities are, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what opportunities you avail, what opportunities you get lazy about. You know that about yourself more than anybody else. And you and I decide to lie to ourselves. We just decide we're not going to have an honest conversation with ourselves about ourselves and about ourselves with Allah. We don't want to have that honest conversation. For some people, all they want at the end of their life, what is success to them? Maybe I'll own a house. That's success for them. Maybe if I have this much money, that means I have success. Maybe if I got married to this one or that one, maybe that's, that means I have success. But I go back to what I started with. There are some people who are happy with doing just the minimum. Just the minimum. But I am here to tell you the young people in the audience today. Allah has blessed you and I am telling you He expects great things from you. He does not expect the minimum from you. There are so many Muslims, the only thing left of Islam is their name. That's the only thing left. They don't care about Salat, they don't care about Halal and Haram. They're far from this deen. What can I do to further this deen? What can I do to... I shouldn't just be happy that so many people come and attend Jumu'ah. Does that mean everybody's heart is clean? Does that mean that we, are enough, we don't need any more reminder? Is that what that means? Or are there evils in our society? Are there youth that are turning towards drugs? Are there young people that are just living their life for no purpose? All they do is play video games and watch movies and go to sleep. And the, if you ask them for a purpose, they say, I want to graduate and get a job. Is that a goal? Get a job? Allah gave us such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. But you know what? We are living in strange times. The people who need the da'wah the most today are the Muslims themselves. But even if you get a good job, but you don't do your job. You got the job, but you show up late every day. You got the job, but you don't finish any projects. You're sitting there at the desk wasting your time. You're gonna lose that job. Somebody else will come and do it for you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you wanna see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you wanna see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.